Greetings adventurers, and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David, and today we are at a very special location. Here in the heart of Houston, Texas, we are at Lucky Land. Opened in 2017, Lucky Land is a complete celebration of Chinese culture. Right away when you step on the property, you're greeted with beautiful art and even some classic Chinese dragons. Also, there happens to be a really cool dinosaur statue right outside. Made of all kinds of gears and metal, not really a Chinese artifact. But I gotta say, very awesome. I really liked seeing this. On the opposite side, bright, colorful, classic style umbrellas line the path that leads you up to the front entrance of Lucky Land. If you had any doubt that this place was special, the giant golden rooster out front lets you know that you are in for a treat. Finally, you reach the massive and beautifully crafted front entrance gates of Lucky Land. You can tell straight away the Chinese influence. And then you step inside and it's like being somewhere completely different. I was blown away by the color, the detail, the architecture that is all over the place here at Lucky Land. There's a lot of amazing things to see here in Lucky Land, but one of my personal favorites is Panda Village. Honestly, who doesn't love pandas? These lovable and memorable guys were all over the place in this little panda village. Some were eating, some were playing together, some were just trying to take a nice afternoon snooze. Best place in the entire park for pictures in my opinion. Really, really special. If it was really hot outside, you could even duck into this alcove here where they had some benches set up just to get out of the sun for a little while. For a bird's eye view of Panda Village, you could climb the staircase and then look out over the little panda kingdom. This is probably what it looks like if you were king of the pandas, surveying your entire kingdom below you. Nearby, they focused a little more on the people side of things, with these extremely well-made statues that showed a little bit of what it was like as a normal person living in Imperial China. Just the different everyday activities they would do, the work and chores that they had to accomplish. It was interesting getting this little glimpse into history. These guys here were taking a quick break to have a snack and have a good old fashioned argument about something. We've now reached a monument 
to Kung Fu. As the sign says, Shaolin Kung Fu is the oldest and most widely spread school of Chinese martial arts. It is now actually considered one of the most famous martial arts in the world. A cornerstone of Shaolin Kung Fu is the many different fighting styles represented here in the statues. We have basic stance, tiger fist stance, single long lance stance, fan stance, Sidekick stance, fist stance, sword master stance, half crescent moon stance. The Punch Drunk Stance Tiger Claw Stance Swan Stance Long Lance Stance The Wu Zhu Punch Stance, Grasshopper Stance, The Palms Stance, and last but not least, Monkey Stance. The atmosphere here is just very, very unique. You certainly don't feel like you're in Texas anymore. This feels like a little slice of China cut off and thrown right in the middle of the United States. It's very interesting. Got my peacock friends here. Let's keep exploring. If you want to take a break while you're exploring Lucky Land, they have little ceremonial huts set up that you can come in and take a load of. But for now, let's get back to exploring. We wander a little further down the path, and we find the Happy Buddha's Garden. As you may have guessed by the title, inside there are a whole bunch of statues of Happy Buddhas. Look how happy they are. Got those smiling faces on, those big bellies out for everyone to see. Look at all the Happy Buddhas. I don't think I've actually ever seen Buddha statues like the white ones here that all look a little more realistic. I really like the bigger standing laughing Buddhas, but this was a very interesting little corner of the park. Nearby to the Happy Buddha Garden is Lucky Village, which was possibly one of the cooler things that I've ever seen. It is these miniature buildings that are built just like the old Chinese ones and all little figures put outside. It actually reminded me a lot of Tiny Town that we saw back in Hot Springs, Arkansas last year. 
uh, definitely check out that episode if you like miniatures. That place is fascinating. But anyways, this was really cool in all the details. You can tell that the work that went into this, very, very meticulous. Each little detail was correct. There was little knobs on all the doors. There were people that were standing there that were accurate to the building that they'd be going into. Uh, I almost wish that I was here at night because it wouldn't surprise me if each of these little lanterns lit up to really make it even that more wonderful. Walking down and seeing all these buildings, it actually reminded me almost of a film set. I felt like at any minute there was going to be cameras rolling and there was going to be just a whole little story taking place in front of me. That's how great these looked. Like something had just jumped out of the past and was right here in front of me to look at. You can tell that the park really knew their history of Imperial China as they commissioned and put together these buildings. Every figure that's in front of them is dressed in the right time period. The buildings are all based on actual ones that have been found in archaeological digs and things like that. So they know that this building looked exactly like this and they've just made it in miniature here and brought it to Houston. As you moved on, the buildings got grander and the amount of people outside, the soldiers, so I believe it was moving further into palaces and things where royalty actually stayed, the emperor, things like that. So that was really cool seeing the contrast of, I, I guess, kind of the beginnings of it where regular people would be living and then going all the way up to these really grandiose kind of complexes where they had soldiers, they had villagers, they had people all outside. And see this one here. They even have a little area where they could carry the emperor in. And all the people standing outside. This thing was massive. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that the materials used for it were the same ones that were used to make the original buildings back in the older days. They even have these statues here to represent statues that were actually built outside of it. I like that they were made differently than the people ones, so it was easy to differentiate between them of what was a statue and what was a person statue, I guess. <laughs> but these were amazing. I could have stayed here for hours just taking in all the details. Speaking of emperors, there was a monument here to the very first emperor of China. And of course, the main attraction at Lucky Land is this replica of the Terracotta Army, right here behind me. The original Terracotta Army was found in the burial location of the first Quinn Emperor. The original army dated back to around the late 3rd century BC, and they were discovered in 1974. The rough estimates of the time were that the mausoleum contained at least eight thousand soldiers, 130 chariots with 520 horses attached, and at least 150 cavalry horses on their own. This particular representation of the army is of course not full scale, as that would have been massive, but it was created from the same clay that the original terracotta army would have been made from. These used to belong to a location a long time ago called the Forbidden Gardens, which were also in Houston. However, they shut down. It seemed like this fantastic art piece was going to be lost. However, the founders of Lucky Land stepped in and purchased every single statue and brought them here so that people could still enjoy them. And man, I am sure glad they did, because this was spectacular. Each individual soldier 
had his own expression, his own personality, different weapons, different plating on his armor. It was really great seeing how much work and care had gone into these soldiers. You can tell that whoever made them really wanted to get them as accurate as possible to the actual size ones in China. After seeing this, I can't even imagine what it would be like seeing the full-sized ones over in China, but it has definitely been added to my bucket list of something I'd love to explore someday. And of course, a statue of the Emperor himself sits looking over and leading his army. Just for a scale, this guy next to me is the size of how big the actual terracotta soldiers in China really are. You can't mention China without talking about the Great Wall of China, so they had a little piece of it duplicated here. Here's a little shrine dedicated to bumblebees. I think it's pretty cool. And interestingly enough, we even have a section dedicated to some more modern heroes, the Transformers. It was certainly unexpected and a little out of place to see the Transformers gathered here, but they looked fantastic. I really liked them. And I mean, there was a dinosaur at the front, so why not some giant robots, right? All brings it together. Optimus Prime is here, that automatically makes this the safest park in the world. I certainly feel lucky to have gotten to see Lucky Land. It's a gorgeous, beautiful park, and I feel like I really learned a thing or two. Well, my name is David, this is Abnormal Voyages, thanks for tagging along. See you on the next adventure.